Hello everybody, welcome to another great episode of Distilled, Brewed, and Reviewed. Yeah, that's what we're doing here today. If you're new here, I not only do these coffees, everything that has anything to do with coffee, I do everything that has anything to do with alcohol. And how do you find all this stuff? Well, I have the most extensive, up-to-date, easily navigatable playlist on YouTube. Check it out, I have everything categorized so nice. I do all these things for, for well, one reason, one reason only. First of all, I'm the only one in the world that can do this much stuff. And to make it fair to the other YouTubers, what do I do? I do it with half my taste buds tied behind my back. Don't worry about that. I could do this with a quarter of my taste buds. I'm using half. I'm in my world famous sipping den, and today we are doing Coffee Bean and Tea Leaf Company, House Blend, Melange Massal, Light Rose Coffee. Melange Massal means House Blend in French. Woo! There it is. It's got a hole in it. Now I didn't shoot that. All right. I didn't. I didn't shoot it. What I did was, I used a Keurig machine. Got this out of a hotel room. To be honest, they had it. I'm like, I'm reviewing it. Yeah. I've done many. Uh, coffee bean <clears throat> tea leaf coffees, but I haven't done the light roast, and so here we go, loop de la. You know, it's an interesting company, and I'm gonna tell you why. And it is worth because here I know I'm gonna review this and tell you a bit about it. If it's interesting, we have to kiss, kiss on the history, and this is worth it. The company is founded by Herman Hyman, Herbert Hyman. In September of 1963, now there wasn't a lot of coffee stuff going on in 1963. I don't remember how many coffee shops other than, I mean, specialty ones like Starbucks or whatever. I remember coffee shops where you go in, you can get a cup or like Dunkin' Donuts or something like that. And you can get a coffee. And coffee shops are sort of like breakfast, lunch and stuff like that. And you can get coffee, but no real specialty coffee shops that I remember. Anyway, as a coffee service for offices... So he started off supplying coffee for offices. His wife, Mona, um, who he married in 1966, and honeymooned in Sweden. A honeymooned in Sweden. Odd place to honeymoon, I guess. Uh, where they discovered quality coffee. Okay, compared to here at the time, probably. Not now, but. Uh, this sparked the decision to import, roast, and sell gourmet coffee in Los Angeles. Opening the first coffee bean store in 1968 in the Los Angeles neighborhood of Brentwood. Hmm. Interesting. He's pioneering this sort of in a place that probably was nice in 1963. It may still be. California's gone. Austin, LA's gone. I don't know anything about Brentwood. Innovations including included selling whole beans and touting their country of origin and allowing customers to observe the beans being roasted and then to sample varieties before making a purchase. That is pretty neat for 1963, right? Or, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, Mr. Hyman died on uh, April 28th, uh, 2014 at the age of 82. But by the 70s, the firm had expanded to 10 stores in Southern California and had added exotic teas to the menu. In the summer of, has still, uh, in the summer of 87, an employee brought a blender to the Westwood store where he mixed together ice, coffee extract, and chocolate powder, paving the way for the company's signature ice blended drinks. With the uh, invention of the ice blender, uh, the chain saw a surge in popularity. The drink was a predecessor to the Starbucks Frappuccino. See, this guy was on the ball. In 91, when it was first planning to expand into Los Angeles, Starbucks tried to purchase the firm. Probably pay a good amount, take over his stores, change the name, and boom. But Hyman turned them down. He didn't want nothing to do with that. The opening of Starbucks stores in Los Angeles unexpectedly, unexpectedly, I am not pronouncing this well, uh, helped Coffee Bean's business by driving curious customers to the area. So apparently more people came than the one store can handle, and it spilled over to him. All right. It goes on a little bit about different stuff. Nobody cares. That's the most interesting part of it. Now, it came out pretty dark. All right.
typical coffee shop store bought everyday smell pleasing right? coffee smell nothing outstanding I'm, I'm not picking on anything crazy out of it just a generic nice coffee smell no bad elements nothing crazy beyond a generic coffee smell All right. dark for a light roast hmm. cheers my beautiful friends what I'm trying to pick out a lot of times in a light roast you could pick out some vegetative, uh, floral, grassy type taste that get obliterated, obliterated. Oh, you can tell I need my coffee bad. Obliterate it as you increase the roasting, right? And it changes to other flavors, right? But I'm not really picking out a lot of that. What this coffee reminds me of in flavor and smell. It's just a typical coffee shop, donut shop, average Joe, chain store cup of coffee. It's all the same. Man. So there's nothing bad about this coffee. Nothing outstanding about the coffee. It's just a solid cup of coffee and that's about what you want, I guess. All right, put a little heavy cream in here. And I got some crazy coffees. Oh, check out the playlist. First comment's going to be pinned because it's mine, but not just because it's mine, because there's a link to my coffee reviews. You just press on it, and boom, there they are. And what fascinating stuff I have on there is unbelievable. I have everyday coffees, yes. Coffees that I get out of hotel rooms. Coffees that I buy in grocery stores. Coffees that I buy online. Coffees that I buy when I travel different coffee shops and coffees that people send me because they know I do this family and friends from all over the world beautiful different flavors everything you can imagine decaf I got a whole separate list for that instant whole separate list for that yeah all right here we go nice pleasing smell of delicious cream and a cup of joe take down the acidity you know Same description with cream in it. An everyday solid cup. The cream did not obliter obliterate it. It uh, still shines through the cream. It just added a nice mouthfeel and a little bit of vanilla flavor and just mellowed out the acidity. And in my opinion, made it better. But I always say that about almost every coffee that heavy cream makes it better. So I'm done. The review's over. Now, don't forget to subscribe. You know, I forgot to say. Me doing all this stuff makes this kind of a mega mall of. Anything has anything to do with alcohol and coffees, right? You obviously like coffee because you're here. If you like any of that stuff, even coffee, because I have this broken down not only in coffee, but instant coffees, um, flavored coffees, decaffeinated coffees. This is a one-stop shop. This is a one-stop channel. We'll liken this to stores. You want to go to a thousand store shopping while you go ahead. Or you can go to the mall, the mega mall, and get it all done there. Or online, right? You have the whole world at your fingertips. So the whole world is in your fingertips right here on my playlist. Yeah. So now I'm just chatting with you. Now that you've subbed, now that you get the channel, and now that we're friends, and now that you know when you comment, I will comment back. Well, now we're just shooting the doo doo. So I'm in my world famous. This is my world famous Sunday morning coffee review. I'm in my world's famous. Um, Sipping Den. Beautiful place to be. Got a hell of a collection of whiskeys, everything you can imagine behind me. I got probably, no kidding, I got one, two, three, four, five, six wooden boxes of wine right here. Um, wine, a whole thing of wine there. A wine refrigerator. <laughs> wine, wine everywhere, hundreds of bottles of wine. Hundreds of bottles of various liquors. 
bottles of beer, everything you can imagine, coffees, paraphernalia for all this stuff. I've got glasses by the tons, collector stuff, mirrors, pool table, beautiful sound system. I have it all down here. So many different ways to make coffee. I'm at a loss. The only reason I have a million bottles is because when company comes and when family visits me from out of state, I love bringing them down here and letting them go crazy back here. It dwindles down my supply a little bit. I don't care. I buy it faster than they can drink it. And if they get drink something I can't get again, who cares? I'll get something else. Point is, it keeps population control to a point because I can't do it. So, friends and family, they do it. That's fine. They love coming over, right? Help yourself. Imagine helping yourself. This to one of the biggest bars you've ever seen. It's incredible. The only thing is when it comes to the wine, I have to review it first, and then they can have all they want, right? No, I'm sucking it down before I review it. So I review it. Let me see. What do you want? Pick some stuff out. Let me review it. Have at it. All right. Beers, I don't do that. I'm not going to sit there and pour a little and give him a beer. So that's so what I tend to do there is just have some bulk stuff uh, so they can have it so I don't have to get into the stuff I want to review. Or I lose some stuff and then I don't get the review, but you know, I can buy it again. It's about having fun down here and a good time. The place is a good time. I got some leather couches down here, or chairs rather. And I sit here a lot of times and I read and I listen to music and I just chill out and I take a, you know, a coffee or a whatever I'm reviewing and I sit down after the review's over and I finish uh, drinking it, contemplating things. Usually contemplating what I have to do for the day. Unless the day's over. Then I try and forget about what I have to do tomorrow. Just relax for a few minutes. You know, it's busy people, right? Busy, busy, busy. This is my hobby. I started it in 2017. Um, and it's evolved. Started just doing wine at first. Now look what I do. Everything has anything to do with alcohol and coffees. I've been in the business my whole life, you know. Uh, my family was involved in owning liquor stores and restaurants, and so I got involved. I've been drinking coffee and wine since uh, who knows when. Um, and then throughout the years, I've worked in various aspects of the industry. Hmm. Always keeping my foot in the door. And now I am... Uh, I hate to say the man, but uh, there is a, uh, a little bit of a demand for services that I can provide. So, I'm having fun now. I'm basically retired. And this is part of my fun. I love the channel. I love the people I've come in contact with. You. It's just fun. It just keeps me involved. It keeps my, me learning because I've done over a thousand videos and I've researched every single one of them. I don't remember a lot on it. Uh, sometimes I have to look at my own videos again. But I remember some. And if I just remember a little bit, and then it builds up over time. But it's a fun hobby, right? YouTube's a fun hobby. What I do here is a fun hobby. Hmm. Well, thank you. Uh, for, if you're still here, being here, hopefully you shared a cup of coffee with me. And as always, I will see you all.